I have done some experiments with spoons for regular models, but I thought I'll see what it looks like being sprayed onto polycarbonate. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and I'm going to talk about painting car bodies. Now, this particular one is actually an experiment I've been doing because there's been quite a shortage of um, polycarbonate paint. I've been trying painting polycarbonate bodies with regular modeling paints. So one of the uh, important features of a body is the paint should be flexible because these need to be able to move without the paint coming off. So what I have done here is I did have a little bit of white left. So that's all the white that you see here. That's been done with a spray can. So it's PS1 polycarbonate from Tamiya. But the rest of it, that you can see all the blue and all the flames that's been done with an acrylic. And what I've been playing with is some of the green stuff world paints. And they're primarily used for minis and regular stiff plastic. So, so far, so good. So let me show you what I've used so far. Now I've been experimenting with the color shift paints. These two here. So there's a quite a range of color shifts and they, the crystals in them look different depending on the light angle. And I'll try to show you those effects in a moment. And I've also been experimenting with chrome. Okay, so this is the airbrush chrome from Green Stuff World. I have um, done some experiments with spoons for regular models over black, but I thought I'll see what it looks like with it being sprayed onto polycarbonate. And if you're not familiar, polycarbonate is actually sprayed from the opposite side. In a regular model, you'll be spraying it from the outside. Or with these, it's actually reversed. So it's sprayed from this side. All right, so from the overhead, let's have a closer look. Now what I have is, there's a bonnet. I've got all the various blues. And you may just see all that uh, very light metallic blue. You can see the dots across the front. So this is actually hand brushed green stuff board color shifting chameleon paint. And I've been trying to show you how it changes. It actually goes from purple to blue, which is very hard to do in this particular light. Okay, so from here, this is where it turns into the purple shade, it gets darker. And as I rotate it towards the light source, you'll see the blues start coming through and the crystals start picking up all the light. Okay, another part that I've tried is just around this bulge around here. That's a different color shift, which goes from green to purple. You might be able to just see some parts of the green popping through in the reflection as I roll it. And then you can see the chrome, which I've used around the window trims and also on the edges of the design and that's worked out really well. So I think I've found a really good technique for applying chrome and I'm actually quite surprised that it works the other way around. So this is actually sprayed from the inside and some other chrome. So if you tried to do that with a uh, Molto, that'll actually look quite matte and aluminium looking. You may not see how reflective that is until I actually put my finger up there and you see how it's actually like a mirror to that top section of the windscreen. Okay, so same with the these flame marks there. So it's actually quite impressive. It's a lot better than I achieved using a uh, spoon. Okay, so what I've uh, discovered is using a lower PSI works better. I was initially applying it with 18 PSI and noticing that it was drying before it hit the surface, giving a very matte aluminium look. And after turning it down to 10 PSI and it allowed it to apply wet and then you see it, it evaporates fairly quickly. It gave this really nice mirror finish. And the interesting thing is the mirror finish is on this side and also on the other side, which is going to be hard to see because we've already backed it with uh, some black. So I experimented with a black backing on this side and I also experimented with white backing as well. So although it's hard to tell the difference, there is slight um, advantages with either. I think the black actually looks better. So the black is a much more high contrast with the white backing, depending on the angle you hold it, it actually looks a bit muted. Look flat looking, I guess, or I guess the other description would be frosted. Okay, so that's the white section across here. Oh, that's the black section. Might be hard to see. Actually, did I get that right? Yes. Okay, so I've done that as well. Now the back one, this was all backed with white and actually looks like a gray. Okay, still reflective, but it's not that crash hot, so. It's up to you to, to experiment as well. See what sort of look you want. Still reflective, but it's a different tone. So out of all this, I prefer 
the black backing. Okay, so obviously this hasn't been driven yet, so it hasn't had any huge um, shocks, but so far the paint's looking fairly good. Okay, it is quite thin. Okay, so it does scratch easily if I put my fingernail onto it, but I guess if you put your fingernail onto polycarbonate, it will scratch as well. Just, it'll be a little bit tougher than this stuff. So I think overall, once you spray it with this acrylic and you back it with a polycarbonate paint, so this would have been perfect if I had enough polycarbonate white to cover everything, then I think this will be a really tough body. And it'll give you a lot of um, scope for really fine designs. Greatest advantage I had with this was I live in an apartment and I sprayed all this indoors, apart from the polycarbonate, which I sprayed on the balcony, because that's a strong smell. But everything else is quite mild. And you see the back section too, you see all those lines there, that's actually just been um, stippled on with a, uh, a long foam brush. Okay, so that's how I got those even lines, but it's, it looks rough enough or uneven enough to be quite interesting. And it's really hard, it actually looks really great when you can get it through from the purple to that light blue. And I think it's just the way we've got our studio lights set up. But by eye, you can see the full transition from purple to light blue. Okay, I've got that on, actually it's a bit hard to see, but I've got that on the back as well. Okay, so looking at the insides again. So you see how I've backed these parts of the chrome with the the black, the black I've used here is actually standard Tamiya acrylic X1. So I say gloss black. Now when I've applied that, I've used acrylic, uh, Tamiya acrylic thinner to thinner to airbrush. And it probably does beat a little bit. It has this sort of water effect to it. So it needs to be applied in very, very thin coats. But so far so good. So it hasn't uh, flaked off as yet but I'll let you know what this is like uh, when we go further because I will be spraying up my velodrome car and we'll see how it copes with that. But as you can see, it's got a really nice finish. Okay, so that chrome is quite amazing. Okay, again, I'll show you that reflection. It's a full chrome, full mirror. I've never really liked chromes on bodies before. I've always thought, you know, little pass like that is all it needs. Because I have seen a whole body painted in chrome and that's a bit much. But if you use it for accenting like this, I think it works really well. Because with chrome, you get it transitioning from total black where it doesn't reflect any light to a full reflection. Okay, so there we go. So it looks quite interesting. And here's the paints that I've used. Okay, so this is the Tamiya acrylic gloss black. Use that for backing all the chrome. Here's some of the color shifts here from green stuff. This particular one is the cobalt blue, which is the one which is across the top here, which actually transitions all the way to purple. And then I use this one, which is the Martian green. This is the part which I've used across the front here. You can see a little bit of the green coming through. And then I used it across these arches here too. So you can see a bit of purple coming through there. And then finally, this is the chrome I've used. So this is the green stuff metal chrome airbrush. So make sure it's the airbrush type because the other one acts like the Molotov, which is great for brushing on, uh, but it doesn't work so well in this situation. So this one applied in thin coats, very low PSI is a trick. And then, I don't know, I probably ended up with four or five coats before I backed it with black. So again, experiment with that because every airbrush is a little bit different, but it turns out quite well. So it's fairly easy to achieve that. All right, so there is my little review and experiment on painting a body with some standard modeling acrylic paints. So, some people say it can't be done. I've done it here, but I don't know what the durability is like until I actually drive it. But from what I can tell here, and just from general bending, it is it's pretty good so far. So, you would expect that to all flake off right now, but it's still stuck, okay? And it's probably helped by the polycarbonate that I've got on the white here. So I would thoroughly really recommend that as well. So experiment with that, particularly now when um, polycarbonate paint is actually quite low in supply. There's no harm in trying and seeing if we can get some really good results. So that's it there. So thank you for watching.